exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today. And we've got a lot of news coming up. We've got Alex Jones who's going to be joining us at the bottom of the hour with a special report on climate change. Yeah, that's part of the intolerance that we've seen. We were just talking about how there is so much intolerance towards religious freedom. And you know what, folks, even if you're an atheist, you need to support religious freedom, just like you need to support other people's freedom of speech. Those two are connected together in the First Amendment for good reason. If you're going to attack religious freedom, you're going to lose free speech as well. So don't use your free speech to attack religious freedom. Try to be tolerant. And being tolerant doesn't mean that you coerce other people into recognizing and subsidizing things like homosexual marriage. You can still have tolerance where people are allowed to live their lives. And maybe what we should do is what Ron Paul said, and that is get the government out of the marriage business. You know, they weren't always there. In the 1700s, it was the purview of the, uh, of the uh, churches. They, they kept records of births, of deaths, of marriages. What happened was it, it just kind of fell back into the purview of the, um, of the government because they had people who were going from one town to the other, having multiple wives. It became, there were several high profile cases. As many people pointed out, bad law is predicated on bad cases. And what they did at that time, they decided that they were going to centralize record keeping. That's how we got into the situation where government defined what marriage is. And many conservatives might push back and say, but I, I like the traditional definition that we've had of marriages. And that's fine. Push for that. Persuade people of that. Government is not the only tool that you've got. And whether you're a conservative Christian or whether you're an atheist, you need to start looking at tools that are not only non-coercive but persuasive. But understand that government is not the proper way to change society. If you've got a hammer if that's the only tool that you've got, then everything looks like a nail, as they've said. And unfortunately, to many people, whether they're conservatives or liberals, the only hammer they think they've got, the only tool they've got is a hammer, the government. And they hammer everybody with it. We need to try to persuade people, especially the Christians, need to try to persuade and not coerce people. And basically, we're not trying to coerce people. We're not going around arresting people who are living their lives in their homes because they're engaged in homosexual activity. There was a time when that did happen. That is not what's happening now. But now we have the opposite effect that has taken place. Now we have people who are getting sued because they don't want to participate in a homosexual wedding, for example, as a photographer, as somebody who is providing services or whatever. We need to support people's ability to make choices. That's what this is all about. And we see a lot of intolerance in a lot of different areas about that, whether it is the government forcing people to provide abortion coverage in their companies, or whether it's a child who is trying to have the freedom to read his Bible during a study hall in school. We see a tremendous amount of intolerance. We need to understand what Voltaire said. He said, I may not agree with what you say, but I'll defend to death your right to say that. And we don't see that from too many people. But I read a great quote from Andrew Sullivan in the last segment where he was very upset about what just happened with the Mozilla executive who was shoved out because he had supported Proposition 8 for traditional marriage. Again, I think the way to do this is to roll this back and not allow the government to have the say-so. Allow people to do free association. Allow people to make the choice as to whether or not they want to, in their business, to subsidize what kind of relationships, whether they want to subsidize marriages at all. Whether they're homosexual or heterosexual, they should be able to make that determination instead of having it forced upon them. The first time I ever heard about homosexual marriage was when I was taking a libertarian candidate around. And 
He was asked that question, and his answer to that was exactly right. He says, you're trying to use government to force people to subsidize something they would not normally do or to force them to do it through the government. I don't think that's the libertarian position. It wasn't 20 years ago. I don't think it should be today. We're going to be right back. We've got some breaking news about real-life super soldiers and the way our government treats its soldiers. Stay tuned. We're going to have that information right after the break. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet, the highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease? It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to Big Pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products. And get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com Take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today, and there is a bad moon rising. If you're aware of the Captain America story, as you probably saw the first movie, and it's probably the most anticipated movie of this year, uh, opened last night for a couple of showings across the country. Today is really kind of the official rollout date. And, of course, that is predicated on the idea of the super soldier. The super soldier is not a science fiction idea anymore. This is something that the government is heavily, heavily investing in. But I want to take this Fort Hood shooting that happened this week and the responses to it and look at that as well as the way our government has treated veterans in the past, the way they're treating them now, and what they are proposing, what DARPA is proposing to do to military with PTSD in the future. And as we get to that, we're going to look at DARPA's idea for their future soldier, for their biotech soldier, for their super soldier. Now, as this shooting happened, a lot of people were talking about PTSD. And of course, he was not diagnosed with PTSD. He was not in battle. 
uh, he did have a gun in an area that had been declared a gun-free zone during the Clinton administration and has been left that way throughout subsequent Republican administration. And, of course, Obama is not changing that either. It shows the bankruptcy of the idea that here are people that we're going to hand um, not only sidearms to, but uh, every kind of firearm, rocket launchers, tanks, you name it, missiles. But they cannot be allowed to have firearms to protect themselves, to protect others. That's absolute nonsense. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, that's the same kind of thinking that harasses airline pilots and tries to confiscate their nail clippers in the name of making the plane safe from terrorism. Okay, if you're going to take away the nail clippers from the pilots, if you're going to take away the sidearms from the soldiers on the base, that's just idiotic. It's just idiotic. If the person's a problem, they don't need to be an airline pilot or a soldier. But if they're there, they've already got the tools to do far more damage than what you're ta talking about taking away from them. Now, the thing that concerned me about this was as I heard a lot of conservative people saying that we need to get that these military bases, and this is a story that had a lot of local coverage here in uh, the Austin area, as well as it being a national story because Fort Hood is not that far away. It's just a couple of miles, a couple of hours away from Austin. And so there was a lot of uh, talk on local talk radio about it. And as I was driving in the other day, I heard these guys talking about it and made the comment, one of them made the comment, Fort Hood is just filled with crazy people. And the other guy, who was kind of a conservative, kind of pulled back and said, you can't say that. Not because he didn't think they were crazy, but because he wanted to find some more politically correct term to use. Look, it, this, is the, uh, this is the kind of trap that is the most dangerous kind of trap for gun control. And I've seen some people in the NRA say that we need to have psychological evaluation and permission from the government in order for anybody to have guns. This is something that's not going to just affect veterans. This is something that's going to affect everybody. The way that tyrannies in the 20th century preferred to lock, get rid of dissidents, to get rid of any opposition, was to declare them as crazy. It's very easy to declare somebody insane. It's very difficult to prove that you are sane, especially when somebody has said that you're insane. Remember the movie, One Flew Over a Cuckoo's Nest? Remember, Jack Nicholson came in pretending to be insane so that he could get out of the ordinary prison. He thought it was going to be a, uh, a cakewalk in the in sanatorium. Okay? And, and he runs into a test of wills with Nurse Ratchet. And eventually that ends. Sorry, spoiler alert. I'm sure most of you have seen it. It's, it's one to go back and look at again. But it ends with a lobotomy. And that pretty much discredited the idea of lobotomy. Dramatic narratives can be very, very effective in terms of waking people up. Now, you need to be able to step in with the facts afterwards, but it, it's that kind of visceral connection really does wake people up. And that's why we spent time talking about Captain America, because it addresses some fundamental core issues that we need to address right now in this country. And I want to Go back and look at the history of the way veterans have been treated in this country, especially some who went through the most, some of the most horrendous conditions of World War II, being interred in Japanese prisoner of war camps for years. When they came back, they, had, they were deeply troubled psychologically. And they took them into the VA, and, and there was an excellent series that was done by Michael M. Phillips for the Wall Street Journal back in December of 2013. I think the guy deserves a Pulitzer Prize for this. Great research, great story. What he found was that the VA, the U.S. government, lobotomized over 2,000 soldiers after World War II. Listen to this particular account. There you see on the screen is, is one fellow that they talked to. His name is Roman Tritz. And he says, Roman Tritz's memories of the past six decades are blurred by age and delusion. But one thing he remembers clearly is the fight he put up the day the orderlies came for him. He said, they got the notion they were going to come and give me a lobotomy. To hell with them. The orderlies at the veterans hospital pinned him to the floor, he recalls. He fought so hard they eventually gave up. But the orderlies came for him again on Wednesday, July 1st, 1953, a few weeks before his 30th birthday. 
The U.S. government lobotomized about 2,000 mentally ill veterans and likely hundreds more, he points out. He said the VA performed the brain-altering operations on former servicemen that it had diagnosed as depressives or psychotics or schizophrenics. And they occasionally did it to people they identified as homosexual.